I'm Matt. This is Let's Talk Music. I'm here with Jeff Rhodes of Them Damn Kings. He's uh, joining us from Savannah, Georgia this evening. That's right. So how's the weather down there in Savannah today? It's cold, man. <laughs> I, uh, Same here. It's cold. It's uh, it's not supposed to be, man. I didn't, I didn't move down here for the cold to be following us down. But uh, you know, last year was pretty mild. This year it's freezing out, man. See, and that's the thing, like we've had 50, 60 degree days here recently, and then all of a sudden just boom, dropped the bottom dropped out. It was like, I think 17 degrees when I woke up this morning. Wasn't happy about yep. that shit at all. <laughs> oh, man. No, it's a uh, last year, last year, I mean, what shit last week? It was uh, uh, 75, 80 degrees out. And this week, it's like, I'm like, it's, it's, it's going to snow for sure, man. Like, that's unheard of here, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not very often at all. No. Uh, tell me about them damn kings, man. Uh, what's what's the history of the band? Well, it's kind of an odd history, I suppose. Uh, you know, I started I started playing guitar when I was twelve, thirteen. Man, I played in a bunch of bands in uh, in, in New Jersey growing up. I kind of somehow got out of that. Uh, I didn't even mean to get out of play, and I ended up buying a. a Bought a little PA that came with a club, started doing sound, and all of a sudden I figured out you could rent that stuff out and make some money, and then next thing I know, I'm out on tour doing audio for bands, and then, you know, 20 years later, I forgot to pick up my guitar again, and I was actually, uh, uh, we were out with, uh, I was doing front of house for Lacuna Coil, which I've been doing for quite some time now with those guys, and uh, we had a band called King supporting us, and uh and I never really get a chance to watch the opening acts or really get to do too much with uh, with the opening bands that are usually on the tour. But man, like they, they they immediately, man. I just remember running up that the first chord that they hit. I ended up running up the stairs from the backstage. It's like, who are these guys, man? I watched them every single day, and uh, they kind of got me back into play. And we were just hanging out in the dressing room one day, and they're like, "Hey, you play?" I'm like, "Yeah, I guess, man." And we sat down and. Uh, started jamming together and I was like, dude, that's, I it just sparked everything again from, you know, when, when I played in bands and all that came home and, uh, uh, you know, wrote the EP right then and there. And then, uh, Ryan from Lacuna Coil who did the drums on the last record and he'll be doing the drums on this record and, uh, this new record mm -hmm. that we're working on now. Um, so I guess it's kind of our thing. He came out, we did that. And then we just, it's just still kind of unfolding like that, you know? Okay. So, so that's kind of the history. <laughs> it's a weird thing how it kind of formed up. I'd always kind of wanted to do more of a, uh, you know, like a solo y kind of thing, but uh, this is how it's worked out. So you say that the opening band was called The Kings? Uh, it was called King, uh, K Y N G. Okay. You guys are awesome, man. They are awesome, dude. Real I bunch of I have heard of them. I'm yeah, man. Yeah, they are a good fucking rock band. So you're a guitarist, a multi or instrumentalist, a vocalist, and a front of house engineer. I mean, is there anything that you don't do in music? I <laughs> <laughs> uh, man, I mean, it, nowadays I feel like it's you like forced into everything, man. You know, it's just we're kind of taking the reins and and doing a lot of this stuff ourselves now. So we're kind of our own label and a sort and, mm -hmm. and management and all that, you know, we're just, just very uh, do it yourself kind of, kind of project. Now it's not to say, I mean, you know, we've, we've got Tom, which, you know, is, is, has hooked us up and, uh, you know, doing our publicity and, you know, we've got uh, Adam as our actual manager, manager, but you know, man, like unless you're making millions of dollars to put in these people pockets, you got to go out and do it all yourself. So, right. But uh, yeah, I mean, I'd say it's <laughs> just one jack at all trades here in the industry, I guess you could say. Yeah, it's like John Kalajner, John Kalajner, you know. Right. <laughs> it, it, it seems to be, um, I mean, kind of the way to go anymore. Um, I've I've done, I think you'll be, a hundred and sixteenth video. Uh, I've done a few interviews, so I'd say around 120. I've done a few that didn't turn out real well, audio problems or something, you know. Um, but, you know, mo almost, I'd say 90, a, uh, about 95% are D DIY bands. 
And yeah. you know, it's I, I I really enjoy talking to DIY bands because you know you guys they're they're hungry, you know, and, oh, and, and being there all of their you know everything into making this music. It's not you know manufactured music that somebody else wants them to do or whatever. It's it's just you know to me. I mean I. Trust me, I love the big label guys, Motley Crue, Metallica. Megan. Oh, yeah, of course, man. But, I mean, I, I found a whole new world since I started doing this. And, you know, when I first started, I was looking to do that. Like, you know, talk to some, one of the first bands I talked to was Boba Flex. Oh, nice. And, you know, I was thinking, okay, these guys are pretty big around here. That'd get me started, blah, yeah. blah, blah. Well, little did I know that there's 300,000 other people well, like myself out there doing this. And then on top of that, you know, <clears throat> that doesn't lead you to the big bands because I have tried with, you know, multiple, uh, well, this one publicist, Amy, she's real hard not to crack, but she, uh, she's out of New Jersey. Mm. And, uh, all right. and <clears throat> yeah, she's got all the big ones. And every time I email her, she's, oh, sorry, they're not available for an interview. I'm like, damn it. <laughs> yeah, but, it's, uh, you know, it's I, I get it where the publicists come from. I mean, you know, a lot of these bands, when they do get up in that stage, they don't want to talk to the little guys anymore. They want to talk to the big radio stations and the big, pub, you know, the big outlet medias and or media outlets and stuff. And, you know, th that's fine. I don't blame them. So, you know, I'm, I'm perfectly content with talking with DIY bands because, I mean, you know, they're the next big thing anyways. Yeah, but it's still kind of man, you know, of, of all the bands I've, I've I've worked for doing audio, man, and I, I've seen this because I, you know, I'm out here, I'm doing interviews with you, and, you know, as many as I can, and I, you know, I don't really, I I don't know the levels or anything. It doesn't matter. To me. I just I love to talk a lot, you know. The, the important part is getting out there and spreading the word, man. And uh, you know, a lot of guys will ask me, oh, hey man, can you get uh, and uh, I won't say names, but can you get these guys to come on? And I, yeah, I'll fucking try, man. Sure, I'm, I'm venturing along. And, you know, it's always like, oh, you know, just tell them to get in touch with our publicist or our management. And it's like, yeah, all right. I know that's going nowhere now, you know. Uh, it's BS, and I hope that never really comes down to it, you know, in, in this case, like, no matter how big you are, like, it don't, it don't matter, you know. Like, you, you never know who you're going to reach or who you're going to talk to or who you're going to bounce into. You never know what this is going to become, man, you know, or, right. or so, man, get out there, do it, talk, you know. Oh, yeah. And I mean, that's that's the thing was uh, the reason my my website is rockmusicandmore.com. Um, I, I created that because I, my primary knowledge is rock. I've, I've been, you know, since I, I can't even tell you when just a, a metalhead and then like you know so i'm like okay but i'm not closed off to other genres you know if you want to bring me some hip yeah, yeah. or country or whatever let's do it um but you know I, I i named the the title was let's talk music because i would always talk to my wife about like oh well this guy did this and this guy did that and she's like dude you know i'm glad you love music as much as you do but i'm not into it like that <laughs> <laughs> yeah like you know start a blog or something and i was like okay so Next thing I know, I get the idea, hey, why don't I, you know, see if I can interview somebody? And then I kind of went from there. And I mean, it's, I love it. And I, I talked to, um, like you said, it opens up some doors. I have what, um, five new publicists that I've picked up, uh, over in Europe. Awesome. Yeah. And I'm telling you what, man, the, 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 the difference between European metal and, and our metal is night and day. Yeah, night and day, man, night and day, and the whole attitude over there is is completely different than it is here. You know, that's actually today, man. When I was going through all my emails and I saw the, uh, you know, the charts come out for the, you know, basically the end of the year stuff with the NACC mm -hmm. charts and all that, and I'm looking down at the top one. I'm like, there's not a single fucking rock and roll band on there, man. There's no rock. There's no metal. I'm like, this is ridiculous, you know. And mm -hmm. they're, so how to actually get like lumped into the specific genre of you know the rock metal uh charts there and of course who is it five finger death punch ozzy osborne and it's just like man what's going on over in this country again you know it's just it's just 
That's crazy. Even when I, I, the last tour I was on with Lacuna and I remember being in the bathroom and I got the posters over at the Fillmore and uh, I don't remember which Fillmore we were at, but uh, you know, and I'm looking and it's like, you got the big room, man. And it's like, uh, I, I don't even know. Just all these pop bands, man. And I, I don't even know what you'd call them anymore, really. Cause they're not really pop. They're not right. I don't know. I have no idea what you'd call these guys, but you know, everyone's sold out, sold out, sold out for the main room in the film And you look over at the other small room and it's like obituary and you know, and it's like, wow, yeah. man, like overkills. And what are they doing in the small room? That's crazy, man. Like I thought we were all still out there, but I guess it's just, you know, I guess we're all getting old. Nobody wants to leave the couch anymore. I don't know. <laughs> hey, um, I, I'm ready to leave the couch every time. Yeah. It's the town, man. So yeah. um, recently you toured with Gemini syndrome did we did yeah man yeah it was nice to go out with those guys uh how many uh days was that would you guys hit like quite a few states well it was how long was that man i think it was just shy of a month that run okay. um yeah we started up in uh the tour started up in in chippewa falls man uh where is wisconsin i think mm -hmm. that is and uh we just kind of made a big a big J loop around the country, you know, the tour did. So, uh, yeah, we started there and worked our, worked our way down this. So I don't think we did. I don't think we did Georgia at all. And, uh, it was, it was a very, uh, very kind of B market tour that one, but this was still, that was coming right off the pandemic and it was still super hard, man. Nobody knew what was going on. Every venue had a completely different rule than the next. Right. Um, so it was weird. It was definitely a weird tour, you know, and we like Chippewa Falls, for example, it was sold out, man. Absolutely sold out. It was great. There's 300, 400 people there. And this is like Chippewa Falls. I'd never even heard of it before, <laughs> man, you know, right. and then, uh, uh, the chance in Poughkeepsie ended up canceling on us for low ticket sales. And it's like, that's weird because normally, you know, every other artist, you know, I'm normally with this is usually really, really, good at those and i think even when uh even when uh the last lacuna tour we were passing through it i don't think it was very uh it was good but it wasn't amazing and then we did new york and then new york city was sold out so right. it was yeah. very very bizarre that we go from chippewa falls in the middle of nowhere to you know a, a pretty good staple and it was you know i mean we did i mean the machine shop was was pretty pretty slamming uh I think we did Lake Lakewood, Ohio. What's um, not, the Epic Center? I think it's called in mm -hmm. Ohio. Maybe that's it. And it was just like, wow, this is this great venue, amazing venue, and it just did not sell very well, you know. And yet I had come back through there, and it it was great. So it's a strange time, man. Yeah, it is. So um, the debut album is Rise Up. Yeah. Uh, I checked the uh, checked out. Quite a few songs on it. Uh, I realized that Throw It Away was actually released in 2020. It was, yeah. So this album has been going for some time now. And it I'm has been oh, sorry. pandemic. Yeah, man. It's been sitting on the shelf uh, the whole time, basically. We, uh, uh, we got the album back from mastering basically right before we went into lockdown everywhere. I guess that was probably in, what, March? And then... Uh, when did we jump the single? I, I can't remember when we put Throw It Away out. No, Maybe that was, it was October, I read. Yeah, I was going to say October. So, I mean, it was still a good five, six months after everything. It was like, all right, let's try this. And, you know, we spent a lot of money uh, putting that out and doing the PR on it. And it was a, it was a good return. But then we just kind of realized, like... Maybe this isn't the right time to release, you know? And our management kind of put everything on hold. And then uh you know 2021 our manager wanted us to kind of put it on hold again and finally i said you know what i i've, I've had enough of this shit man like yeah, I'm, I'm done we're gonna put it i'm already on to the next level you know the next project in my head i was like i've got to get this thing out here so i can move forward man because i just you know feel like it's i'm the kind of guy i'll just pick up the guitar and i'll write a record in a week you know <laughs> and uh that's kind of how that album came up. I mean, we, we did the whole thing and probably in two weeks from, you know, written and recorded and, and all that, you know, my, minus some little stuff here and there, but uh, for the most part, it was done very quickly and, and 
that's just how I work. I'll pick the guitar up and I'll just start writing. And, uh, uh, I can't fucking wait two years between stuff, man. It's just my, my head's already ready to do the next thing. Cause for me, it's a, uh, you know, it's, it's, this is the moment that's happening now and this is how I'm feeling and this is what we're writing. And this is where it's at. So, uh, we've already started the new record, which we're going to start recording, uh, in February and hopefully it's going to be out by April of, uh, uh, 2023. Um, but yeah, we just got caught up in a pandemic, and then, you know, right there, uh, we 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 put it out September 30th, and right when that was happening, uh, Earache uh, <clears throat> had a little bit of interest, so now we've uh, we've got the distribution through uh, Earache uh, uh, Digital Distribution or Earache Digital, mm-hmm. and you know, hopefully, we'll be able to build off of that a little bit more. So it's it's a stepping stone, but I like the fact that we're taking it more of a slow process instead of you know cash grab and done in one, you know. Right. Now, the newest song that came out a couple months ago was The Pill. Yes. Um, the video, I really enjoyed. That That just kind of... Oh, cool, man. It, it was just trippy. So, uh, tell me about the video, man. Uh, uh, who shot it? Where'd you guys shoot it at? I shot the whole thing, man. Uh, we shot it in my basement. <laughs> really? The entire thing was shot in my basement. And uh, I just bought a new little Canon uh, M50 camera. It's like the cheapest, best grade camera you can get. You know, I mean, it's 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 a nifty little camera. But I've been wanting to get – it costs a lot of money to shoot a video, man. And I'm just yeah. like, how can we do this? How can we make this happen? Uh, you know, I mean, Throw It Away was shot all on our iPhones, and Ryan was, uh, uh, you know, he's he's in Spokane, Washington. So I'm like, how can we do this during a pandemic? And that's what we just set up iPhones in our homes, and we all sent each other the video and kind of edited it that way. But uh, uh, the pill, man, we I had <laughs> – we had such this grand plan to like, you know, have it done a certain way. And I'm like, ah, we're going to make this really look like a hospital. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. And we, uh, you know, hired like all these chicks to come down and be in a video. And it it never happened that way, (laughs) you know? So it just ended up with, with all of us just uh, in the basement, we shot the band footage and I'm like, fuck, I really, it's, want to add this stuff in so we got angela my my you know fiance to get in there and just that's just kind of how we did it and i'm like uh, you know uh, uh, how do i do this man so i started uh i don't remember i was watching some movie and i was like yeah oh, how do they i think it was sorry it wasn't a movie i was watching uh, uh guns and roses video mm-hmm. and it was a uh, um uh, i think it's don't cry where he kind of like walks through the mirror you know and then he walks through the door and i'm like how the fuck did they do that so, uh, yeah, I was just like, well, let me try setting up the camera and trying a couple different things here. And I managed to make it work with doing the uh, different shots of uh, putting myself in there and all that. And then uh, that was just kind of fun creating it. man. I mean, we, I've got this glass table down there and I just sh- chucked the camera underneath myself and played through the whole thing. And that's how you get that kind of upward. So it was a lot of fun doing it. And it cost us uh, nothing. <laughs> so can't beat that. Yeah. 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 So it was really, it was, it was cool to be able to do it. I mean, for me, like I'm super unhappy with it uh, just for the fact that like I saw the million dollar production in my head and, you know, we were, but in the end, you know, it's like, Hey, we kind of got something pretty cool uh, out of it, man. It really, it cost us nothing. We had a great time doing it. And it only took us a, a, a day to really actually do everything. And then, Maybe it took me another couple of days to edit the footage together and, uh, you know, a couple different renders and, and that's what we came up with. But I also got that whole thing of like, you know, I, I, I can't focus on, on being like, this is what it is. This is the footage we got. Uh, what's the best that we can do with this? And, you know, that's what we came up with. I mean, I'm not going to sit it. I think for what we did, uh, it came out pretty cool, man. And people seem to enjoy it, which is pretty, pretty awesome. I hope that I get to, be a better filmmaker, you know, because it's something that I, I really enjoy too. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it did. It, it, I mean, it, it looked like it was professionally shot. That's why I was asking, you know. Oh, that's cool, man. Yeah, just uh, all, even, even like the close up, I'm holding the camera like this to myself. I'm, you know, we, we just set up different uh, tripod uh, things in the basement. And, uh, you know, I think maybe I got one of the girlfriends to grab the camera and just do a click with the band. And that was it for the most. Most part, it was all all myself, man, and 
You know, like he even built this little dolly for that. I think there's one shot with the cameras kind of like coming in the TV. And I was like, how are we going to do this? I found some like old PVC pipe and a skateboard. And I built this little makeshift dolly that you could just push the camera on them. It cost us nothing, man. Just shit I had in the basement, you know? Yeah, I can't beat that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, you know, message out there to all the kids is just be, be creative, man. You know, figure it out. You don't need to spend a lot of money on, uh, you know, on, on stuff. You can do this. Yeah. And I mean, that's that's part of that, you know, DIY mentality. A, a lot of these guys are. They're like, you know, uh, well, I got a good friend that, you know, is involved in this and this. And, you know, he came and did this with us and helped us. And, you know, it cost us like 500 bucks or like a thousand dollars. And I remember uh, talking to. Uh, oh. Uh, I'm not even going to say his name because I screw it up every time. We'll just <laughs> just go with. uh Miko, uh, he was the lead singer for Steelheart. Yeah, did yeah. An interview with him, and we was talking about making videos, and he was like, "Yeah, he goes uh, the one for uh, everybody loves Eileen." He said we spent like a hundred and fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, this yeah. is really '90s, man. So yeah, which I mean, videos anymore are a lot easier for people to make they're a lot cheaper because you don't have mtv anymore you don't have no. the big productions like thriller and you know videos like that that just you know just shot off those albums i mean honestly i mean michael jackson yeah great musician but do you really think that thriller would have been that big of a song or that big of an album if that uh, that video hadn't come out I mean, you know, look at Queensryche. I was just uh, reading a bit about that. You know, for me, Queensryche's always been big in my head. You know, mm -hmm. I've always heard him on it. But I honestly didn't realize that, uh, you know, I which I, I think it was Operation Mind Crime, and they were uh, uh, out there doing a the tour, but they were supporting. I mean, they weren't a headline band yeah. yet. And they were freaking out because they couldn't actually do, you know, the, what the album was meant to do in its entirety. And uh, nobody was interested in really picking them up until they went and they sh spent the last of their money making uh, uh, one of the videos off the record, put it on MTV and boom, and just yeah. like that. So MTV was a, was a great tool and I'm just not sure what the tool is anymore here, you know, cause let's face it. I mean, you know, you get, uh, you know, YouTube, I mean, what did they get? I guess something like, I can't even, I can't even pronounce what the amount of, of, of megabytes worth of contents being uploaded or gigabytes. Mm -hmm. I, I can't even know. I don't even know what it's called. It's like a quintuplet or something like that. That's right. getting posted every hour. And the same with like Instagram, it's like, how do you really kind of weed through this and compete with, with everything that's happening when there's a million bands. And so, so yeah, and I'm not trying to bring myself because I'll get caught in this loop where I'm like, oh, why bother, man? But, you know, at the same time, you got to. This is where it's at, you know? Right. And it's I mean, just... apparently it, it, it sounds like it's, you know, what makes you happy. And, you know, it, you you had fun making the video and stuff. So, I mean, that's, I think, the most important part. I mean, yeah, your, your music touching people and making them happy and getting out there is, is all part of the process. But I, I feel like it starts with you yourself of, you know, okay, I created this and I really, really like this. And, you know, I did put it on YouTube with all these, you know, trillions of videos and, you know, I've got, you know, 5,000 views in a week. I mean, you know, you, you, you yeah. can't, you can't really look down on yourself for that. I mean, cause like you said, it's everybody's doing it. I mean, that's what I do with my videos. I, you know, I, I put them on YouTube and just hope that I can reach some people. Yeah. I think the problem is, you know, we're, we're not Kardashians, you know, so <laughs> right, right. Well, that's really the world it's in right now. But I mean, you know, it, it, you get, I see some of these guys from Europe that I've, especially sweden man that i've just i've never heard of and they're just blowing up right mm -hmm. now all over it's great it's awesome man so yeah. it works it's working man it's, it's working a band that i interviewed out there called beneath my feet uh check them out i believe all right I believe they were swedish yes they were swedish and uh man they got a hell of a thing going um i did you know a couple of bands from italy uh germany finland uh, hell, the one guy from Finland was like, you know, 
this isn't really my mother tongue. So, you know, it, you know, can you edit it? And I said, bud, don't worry about <laughs> it. I, I was like, yeah. you know, I can understand what you're saying. Everybody's going to be fine with it, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's like you said, it's, it's blowing up everywhere. And I think that, you know, YouTube and and being able to stream stuff and all that is very important. You know, it it it's today's MTV more or less. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. I think it's starting to come back everywhere. You know, I remember back in the, you know, growing up and going to see the shows. And you know, I grew up obviously in New York City, New Jersey. So I'd go to the all the dirt clubs, CBGBs, all that stuff, man. The limelight, and I'd see all these great shows. And there was just this whole community going on which i haven't really seen in a while now you know it's especially for some of the bigger bands that i've done audio for and i'm out there and it's nobody's even watching a show they're all just you know they're like this with their phone and i'm like man it's in, happening in front of you and uh -huh. uh, but we just did a, a last minute show in savannah one of the local agents that uh had called us up and uh Asked if, was, if if we could fill in because one of the bands had canceled out, so we went down and did it. And I'll tell you, man, it was it was like back in the day. It was awesome. And all the kids, like there was not a single cell phone in the in the air. And and I wish it was filmed because it was a great show, man. I mean, everybody was fucking mosh and, and you know they were all right up in front of the stage. Even the bartenders came out and started mosh and with the <laughs> with it. I mean, it was all it was really it was a fucking great experience. And I wish. Everybody could have been there for that, man, because I have not seen that in a really, really, really long time. So, you know, I remember walking out of the gig that night and me and Yaya were just looking at each other like, did that just fucking happen? This was awesome, man. Like, it was it was great. And so it gave me a lot of hope walking out of there. It was the first time in a really long time. Like, I really, really, really felt it, you know, and I do, you know, I'm out there playing and I feel it, but I really felt it that night. So that was cool, man. So uh, if anybody who came out to the Savannah show a couple weeks ago is listening to this, dude, thank you guys. It was a fucking amazing night. Oh, yeah. All right, man. Well, we're uh, just about out of time. But uh, one one last question I want to ask you is yeah. you said we're talking February for the album to be done, maybe April to be released. Uh, what about hitting the road? Hopefully so, man. We got uh, we we we've, we've we're working on that right now. Uh, we still are kind of in between agents, and we've picked up a couple of people, and uh, it just hasn't worked. And it's a very difficult situation right now mm -hmm. to get out there and tour. I mean, you got every band in the world is still out there trying to recoup over the pandemic, and it's you know difficult when you got the live nation bands like you know and i'm not ragging on the bands because most of the time they don't even know but you know i mean you're charging three hundred dollars plus just to go out and see you know metallica you know it's like and, and some of those tickets i don't know how true it is man i, I haven't really done a lot of research but i saw that thing where it was like upwards of seven thousand dollars for certain tickets with uh, metallica and it's like how are they going to ever afford to come out, man, and, and, and you know, support support the younger and, and smaller bands, you know? Mm. Like, you know, so Live Nation's really fucking it up for a lot of people. And, I, you know, I hate to say, uh, you know, that because I'm sure sooner or later, the, you know, bands like us are going to need them. But fucking stop, <laughs> you know? Like, it's just, it's making it uh, just difficult. It, there's a reason why there's only, uh, you know, Metallica and Five Finger Death Punch and, Slipknot out there, really, you know, and the rest right. of us are just trying to pick the meat off the bone here, you know. Mm -hmm. So, but that being said, there is plans for next year. I don't know how well they're going to work out, but uh, hopefully, it works out, and we just want to get out there and 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 fucking play for everybody, man. It's what we love to do, and it's it's that's where I feel we're at our best. Yeah, and that's I, I do hear that a lot, and I mean you were talking about a community earlier uh it's still there you know and, and that that community um needs you know you guys as much as you need us because yeah. we feed off of each other you know what i mean you, you guys come out and you play you know your live shows you got the lights going you got the you know the the music blaring and and the energy and everything and it's almost like um a collision of your energy and the audience's energy just back yeah up. man and i mean it it creates a great experience for you know musicians and and audience alike 
Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, man. And, and, and people, people need that, you know, oh, we yeah. all need that right now. So, you know, yeah, hopefully, the you know, world's a uh, big old shit box. <laughs> <laughs> it still feels like it, man. It does. You know, I mean, uh, we're still coming off the whole pandemic thing and it's just that even especially this industry, it's just still in chaos, man. You know, it's crazy. But it's gonna work itself out, and uh, you know we'll be uh, we'll be up your way, hopefully, uh, hopefully sooner than later, man. And, you yeah, know. that'd be great. I mean, I've I've talked to you know I'm I'm up for in like spring and summer traveling around. You know, uh, I got invited to one guy's birthday party out in Connecticut. Uh, it's gonna be in January, and I'm like, eh, man, that weather going out that way might not be too great. <laughs> so, I'll make you. You guys make it down to Savannah. It's it's decent. Well, not today. This week's going to be crazy, but uh, you know it's nice and warm down here usually. All right, man. Well, Jeff, yeah. I really appreciate your time. Um, you know, like I said, time. sorry it took us so long to connect. Um, I know shit happens. It happened with you. It happened with me. So, well, it's worked out, and here we are. Yes, sir. Yeah, well, man. you uh, you have a good evening, and sir, um, I am looking forward to some new music in 2023. Uh, really dig the sound, and definitely looking forward to some new stuff. Awesome, man. Looking forward to sharing it with you. Looking forward to be back, man. And for all you guys out there, don't forget, check us out at uh, themdamnkings.com and everywhere else on the internet, at themdamnkings. You can find us everywhere. Go check out the Spotify. Please check out the YouTube stuff and uh enjoy man uh, thank you guys for for thank you for having me and and thank you guys out there for having us all right brother you have a good evening all right you too man all right later